to action. <laughs> Alright guys, if we're going to talk about health, something that's actually very serious on the mission field, there are a couple things you need to know. If you want to get vaccinations, great. If you want to bring medicines like malaria pills, stuff like that, fantastic. If you want to bring Cipro for the um, traveler's diarrhea, that's actually something I would recommend. Um, <laughs> the word probably has got out. I'm not a huge fan of vaccinations because of my mother. She's a witch doctor. But anyway, vaccinations are probably good to get. Um, but that's up to you. We don't force you to get them. But some of the countries do. Um, but things you definitely need to be aware of as far as safety and health while you're on the mission site is be careful what you're eating. A lot of these places will give you good food um, and it's safe and a lot of them will have filtered water so that's fine. Um, but even though the water is filtered, um, it, you're most likely still going to get um, exposed to the different amoebas and parasites in that country through just, you know, showering. The showers aren't going to be filtered, you know. Or if somebody offers you a glass of water and you feel like it's culturally irresponsible not to take that glass of water, it's your own discernment, um, but just know that it will kind of mess with you um, for a couple days, minimum. Um, Rebecca. <laughs> so that's your call. Just be aware that it's going to be a little rough. Uh, if you want to get Pepto-Bismol, I highly recommend it. The chewable tablets are a lifesaver. I can't preach that enough. I, several, several instances. Uh, they're fast acting too. So as a recap, See your doctor, and if you want to take the vaccinations or the pills or the antibiotics or the Cipro, Pepto-Bismol that they give you or um, just advise you to take, it's up to you. Um, err on the safe side, probably say yes. Um, definitely with Cipro because that's like an instant bomb in your stomach to kill all um, bacteria and it'll stop diarrhea real fast. And you don't want diarrhea to go on too long, especially if you don't have a lot of clean water and you're in a very distant place for more than like a day or two because um, these things just get complicated and difficult for everyone especially if it gets to the point of being like medical care because you get dehydrated um, so needless to say be ready to go and don't be um, ill prepared when it comes to medicines inhalers epinephrine so are they expected to bring all this or is anyone going to have it there bring it your own on your own <laughs> So now we're going to talk about immunizations and medical supplies and all of this stuff. Um, every country has different immunizations that you have to have, so make sure you check the State Department website for any updates on that. Um, some of the common ones are India, you're going to need some malaria immu mm. medicine or immunizations. Um, Africa, you're going to need yellow fever. And uh, some places have HIV and AIDS restrictions as well. So just make sure you check the State Department websites and get a hold of a team leader or one of the admin teams and we can help you with that. Second is insurance. Um, the GCT provides travel insurance for you, but if you wish to supplement that on your own, feel free. But it is covered in the cost of the trip and it covers medical, emergency medical, emergency dental, and emergency evacuation. Um, yeah. And the last thing is passports. You need to have a passport that's valid at least six months beyond your mission trip dates. Um, otherwise, a lot of countries won't let you in. I just wanted to leave you with three things when, as we sign off. First, the Gospels. They call us to go into all the world and preach to all creation, which is exactly what you guys are doing. The second is from the Apostle Paul. and It says, do not only preach the wor word, but show your lives as well. So live out the Gospels, live out Jesus. The last thing is from Peter and it says, As you preach, do everything with gentleness and respect. Respect the culture, respect the people, and, be, and above all, be humble. Thank you so much and have a great trip. Um, regarding the biblical basis for missions, um, we often think of Matthew 28 and the Great Commission about going to all the world and uh, make disciples of all the nations. Um, what I've been, but the passage I've been thinking about lately is in the book of John and where Jesus says that he has sheep that are not of this fold. And, and it's his heart, it's the heart of the Good Shepherd to bring in all the sheep of, from various folds and bring them together as one 
And so it's it's not some not only the idea of there's a lost sheep out there, but there are sheep of other folds. And the Lord's heart is for the unity of the whole body of Christ worldwide to help equip each other. So there's there's evangelism, an evangelism component of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, death and resurrection, and um, transformation, and the power of the Holy Spirit, um, social justice themes, all of all of these. But it's also bringing the church around the world together and sharing our gifts. There's just as individuals have individual gifts for the building up of the local body of Christ, so churches have have gifts and personalities of each church, and nations have gifts and personalities of each nation. And when we share those gifts and um, that image of Christ that's reflected in people around the world, the Church of Christ, the Kingdom of God, um, Jesus' Bride becomes more beautiful, more strong, more mature. Ephesians talks about the building up of the body into a mature, um, into a mature image of Christ. And so I think as we travel around the world and make international connections, um, that's part of the heart of God, the heart of the Father, is to bring all his children together in building each other up so that those who haven't heard the gospel yet are reached more effectively, more powerfully, um, and the resources that we can share together are used more effectively. And God gives us all these gifts and wisdoms and ideas and resources to share cross-culturally and worldwide and our joy is multiplied as we connect e with each other all across the world. Mm. If you're considering going on a mission, it's, it, it's probably because the Lord brought something into your life that uh, piqued your interest in some way or put a burden on your heart. And so the time and prayer about direction um, is so important. The Lord will speak to you and the Lord will confirm. And it is, it's got to be a God thing. It can't be about um, all about yourself and what you'll get out of it and or about um, what you can do for other people in your own abilities. It needs to be motivated by the Spirit of God speaking to your heart. And then whatever happens in whatever circumstance that you're in, you will remember and be able to tell yourself, God wants me here. Because there are times when I've been someplace and it's not going well and I have thought, why am I even here? But then I remember that I did hear the voice of the Lord and He said, you're supposed to be here. And so I can get through the rest of the trip because I know, I remember, God says, you're supposed to be here. <laughs> All right, on the topic of servanthood, I, Philippians 2 is tells us to have the attitude of, in ourselves which Christ Jesus had, and that was to take on the form of a bond servant. And Jesus did exactly what the Father wanted him to do, no matter what it cost, to bring salvation to us. And when we go out on missions, especially, I think, short-term missions, we just need to be very flexible in our expectations of what we'll be doing. And anything that comes up, we are a servant of the Lord. And we serve the people. It may be menial 
or you may feel like you're not even doing something sometimes, but what you can do is pray. And you can bring blessing on the land, you can bring blessing on the city, you can bring blessing on the people, blessing on the church. Um, nothing is too small to the Lord. And um, if you're called to do something more um, up front and bold that may make you feel that you're very inadequate, still the mentality of being a servant will bring you the grace of God to do whatever it is you're called to do. Whether it's something way beyond what you think your abilities are or way below what you feel your abilities are, the mindset of serving the Lord, no matter what it is, is going to please the Lord and um, really make the trip the best it can be. My favorite part of international travel and cross-cultural ministry is the people. And um, it's, it's so much fun to make eye contact and try your best at communication even if you don't speak the same language. And the unity that comes from spirit to spirit connection is is what you're going to take home. That's the best souvenir. And the um, joy of seeing God in another person of another country, of another race, blesses your own spirit for eternity. And when you when you think about, I may never see this person again, you may see them in heaven. And how much fun will it be to say, hey, so-and-so, it's great to see you again. And now we can tell our whole story in the same language, whatever that is. <laughs> but um, this spirit connection with other people is so rewarding. And keep really keep that the focus. A lot of the things that we do, they won't last forever, but the people last forever. And they will always remember you. And I, the relationship that you make with the people, they often treasure it more than the Americans do because their lives are so much more relationship oriented when it's not um, materially related in their life. So when you come back home, if you have their contact information and they're expecting you to send them an email, Talk to them on Facebook. Make sure you do that because it means so much to them. And they they will love you forever and you will never forget them. Yeah. Lives will definitely be changed through whatever trip you take. Your life will be changed. Those on the team that you interact with will be changed. The people of the nation that you're going to will be changed. And it's it's inevitable because of the the sharing of spirit to spirit and when a lot of prayers gone into the trip the lord has specific plans for you and for the team and for the mission and for the people that you're interacting with in the other country god has his plans and it and his plans are always to transform lives, to reveal himself, to bring glory to himself through human vessels. And um, so there's, it's inevitable, lives will be changed. And so open up your heart right now, open up your heart to whatever God wants to do in you or through you. And let the Lord do painful surgery on you. If it's gonna be something really deep, let the Lord just have fun with you. Um, let the Lord use you in uncomfortable situations because maybe it's nothing about you. Maybe it's all about the other people. And um, no matter if it's a, if it's a purpose to uh, change you or to change the other person, God's purposes are moving and he's bringing his, his glory through it all. 
and rest in that fact through the good times, the hard times, the fun times, the times when you don't understand who's going where and what's happening. Go with the flow because God's changing you and God's changing others through this all for His glory. Alright, if, uh, if we're going to another nation representing Jesus Christ, we need to have the character of Christ. Integrity and uh, good stewardship is really a big part of that. People are watching us. They know that we have resources, we have money to get there. They know that we have um, technology to use. They know that we have um, connections back home in America. And they, they have some sense that our world is larger than theirs just because we have privilege, opportunity, and um, resources. And so we need to use all of those things in a way that shows um, that we are under God's authority and that our purpose on earth is to steward all that God has given us for His kingdom and for the blessing of all people. And so our personal integrity is one of the ways that the world will see Jesus Christ in us, we need to be honest, we need to live up to our word. If we make promises that we're going to do this for them, or we're going to give this to them, or we're going to um, do something for them when we come home, we need to follow through. And we need to be careful what kind of promises we make to them because we need to be able to fulfill those. We need to be careful about what what we say and um, what we do and the way that we conduct ourselves when we are in all kinds of environments because we are we are a letter of Christ that people are reading everywhere we go we're a picture of Christ um, everywhere we go and so smile love hug give um, and follow through in everything that you promise.